at that time. <laughs> So the question is, how do you get back to being that legend, you know, that was making memories for people, you know, all those years later? And that's the struggle that we all face. And I know Mario had his hand up, but I had to tell you, man, Brian, um, you know, I went through this too. Like I went down that, that slippery slope. I put on a bunch of weight. I stopped exercising. I just ate crap, whatever. I had a job. Um, that kind of like it was uh, a different vibe. It was, it was good. It was fantastic transition for me. No complaints, but I just kind of dropped all of those team oriented things. It was very much me against the world, um, trying to um, demystify the VA process, um, trying to figure out, you know, what I was doing outside of, you know, having a uniform. Where was my place in the structure of the community? Um, because I, I serve the industry as a contractor. So where do I fit now? Um, going from being the guy people call for advice to, well, I can't talk to him because he's a contractor. You know, I had, to, I had to organize that in my mind to where it wasn't a personal thing. It was just the way things are now. Um, that's how it works. You know, you got active duty, you've got civilians, and you've got the un, unclean contractors, right? So I had to kind of wrestle with where I fit in that. And it was sort of sad. It was kind of a bummer, man. Um, but it took me a good like five, I would say a good five to seven years, man. And really, it was COVID that did it. Like COVID was the big, you know, wake up call. Like you are heading to, uh, you know, major obesity slash, you know, drunkenness land. And uh, you need to wake up and freaking figure it out. So I started doing things like, so my love for running had dissipated. I picked up walking. I did a mile walk around our neighborhood, figured out an exactly 1.0 mile using my an app, and I would just walk it. It would take me, you know, whatever it took me to get there, 18 minutes or whatever to do that. Um, and I just did that every day. And then I kind of like felt pretty good about it and invited the wife along. And then we kicked it up to two. And then before you know it, I was like, you know, eh, on the weekend, I'll jog it, you know. And then I'll bring it up to three. And then, like, this is like 2020. Um, I started dropping some weight and started feeling better. Um, met, you know, met these guys as far as like organizing, you know, for, for our little chats and stuff like that to kept, kept us connected during the uh, pandemic stuff. But then something grew out of that, like, hey, can we export this and do something more with it and be vulnerable and share our our, our problems and weaknesses and how we overcame them? And um, it, it kind of went on from there and then it became kind of a norm then, like that was my normal. Um, so now when I don't get out and exercise uh, and I, by the way, it I dropped like 25 pounds and kind of plateaued. So I'm, I'm really happy where I'm at right now. I don't feel like I'm, I'm measuring myself against a number on a scale. I'm measuring myself on how I feel. Um, you know, I can have, you know, cheat weekends, cheat days, you know, get back on the, you know, I don't worry about any of that stuff. It just sort of leveled out, you know, Jerbo looking Jack, who ever would have thought that at 57 years old. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely. And I think the reason I wanted to jump in ahead of the line was because if you don't do something now, it can have a, a pretty devastating effect on you. So like you're asking the right questions. You're definitely, um, I'm glad you brought it up because it, it impacts a lot of us out here. You know, what do we do? Do we just sit and just get absorbed by that couch, that comfortable chair uh, and just, that's it now? <laughs> we just fade off into the sunset? Or do we just take that first step and, and build that, that habit, that new habit, it's going to be no pressure. Let me just lace up my running shoes and go for a walk. Make it a one mile walk. Just commit to it and do it. And then maybe do it three days a week. And then maybe do it every day. You know, I just kind of build on it from there. Don't make it like I have to get back into running again. That's too far away. Um, that was too far away for me anyway. Um, I had to kind of work back to it. Um, but it took a while, man. And, I, you know, peer support is definitely, I definitely encourage that. 
glad again you, you know you came onto the call because that's a huge first step too because you're you're being vulnerable yourself you're sharing some stuff and we've all kind of gone through it um mario man i mean you had your hand up first you know me and you talked a bunch and i shared the exact same speech that i'm sharing now with mario when he was transitioning because i had already gone through it a few years before him um so take it away mario unless brian you wanted to jump back in all right mario you had your hand up first bro yeah no that's all good stuff i i couldn't agree more with it uh spot on assessment uh if i can distill that down even further getting ahead and getting ahead of it and being proactive rather than reactive is something that you know i've talked about a lot but the right questions the right attitude um yeah the the thing that i really wanted to get back to obviously in the line of nature um so i went to there's a few of us that went to warrior path uh probably six seven months ago uh one of the things that uh i wouldn't say a mantra per se but just something that i one of the many things that i took away was that life every day is full of opportunities to do little things big every single day no matter what and it doesn't matter what your specific purpose is like if if you get up today and you know now I, I plan on going to i'm going to drive two hours to get to this place we're going to spend all day there to do this thing i'm buying a car or whatever and coming back within that time frame there are a whole lot of opportunities to do that present themselves on a daily basis that you can have a much larger impact than you realize and I'm not talking specifically primarily for yourself. I'm talking about for other things or other people. Uh, with that, you were talking about, and I'm going bouncing here, but I did want to go back to something you talked about, this chickens, because I we have chickens here too. Uh, we probably have 35 to 40 chickens right now uh, in all various stages from about to die to just born. So, um, but I, I empathize with that. You said that taking care of chickens and stuff, you, you view that as a chore. And I see that as well in myself. We've got goats and chickens and stuff, and sometimes it's a chore. So I like, I'm visual. Uh, so if I look at this as a pendulum or the meter, uh, too far one way goes this way, too far goes that way. Extremes, if you will. And if I look at in the middle of taking care of these chickens, especially the garage chickens right here, if I look at it at a chore, it's probably somewhere down here on the scale. And it's really easy to focus on the chore and dare I say the negative aspects of this one thing that you're doing but i also wanted to point out that there is the other end of the spectrum that goes over here that you learn everything from repetition to discipline to taking care of something alive to even bringing some children here and teaching them about some of our chickens not even talking about the eggs that we get that are way better uh, and more healthy than uh, the the processed ones, you know, the sterile ones basically in there. I just spent probably 47 seconds talking about this side of it, but we tend to focus on this side right off the bat. I'm here to tell you that there is this side there are opportunities every single day to find something small like this whether you're making a new knife or woodworking for you 
or for someone else. There are opportunities every single day for you to find that other end of the spectrum. It's there. It's just what's in front of your face right now, I think, is the shit that was in front of my face and everything coming in, blasting in, not being able to see past, past the chore to get to the good stuff. Any of that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. Because um, that's kind of how I've seen, I've had to reprioritize kind of how I've gone after things and gone after a life, if you will. And uh, boy, some of us really like to accomplish big things and big ideas and, you know, move these big boulders and stuff. But sometimes in reality, it's a whole bunch of smaller, less obvious opportunities on a daily basis. Uh, and that honestly goes back to small incremental changes from atomic habits. But I know Jerbo's smirking because he's probably picking down, putting down, picking up what I'm putting down. No, I, I am smirking because I just, uh, so when I was on active duty and I would, uh, I would mow my yard, right? I got a front yard and a backyard. You've been here medium size nothing to brag about but uh man i gotta get it done it was definitely a chore you know i'm deploying i'm going tdy all the time so i'll just go out and do it the backyard we got pine trees and they drop pine cones right so i would just usually mow over the pine cones and shred them you know <laughs> you know and keep going now that i'm retired and i'm like farting around in the yard i i'll go out in the morning with my cup of coffee survey the land you know okay and I'll go out with my little bucket and I pick up pine cones, take off my shoes, get that grounding thing, get barefoot, you know, walk around the backyard and just pick up pine cones. And I'll fill a couple buckets up and I'll dump them into the thing. And that's my therapy now. Like, you know, that's my grounding, my nature, you know, going out and just picking up pine cones and instead of just kind of crunching over them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Get off my lawn, you kids. So I don't know, maybe th there's something there too, like with, I don't know what it is, just being more intentional. Is it just a natural, you know, aging process? You, you know, you get those uh, new balances with the green stains every year. I don't know, man, something there. That's what I was smirking about, Mario. <laughs> and your chickens, because I've you have patrol chickens, by the way, Brian, you didn't mention this. Like mama hen walks around with her little chicks trailing behind and they do a whole perimeter security sweep of the property i noticed it i saw their patterns like what are they going for like they're not looking at food they're just like patrol chickens i think yeah they're they're <laughs> attack chickens they maintain a safe perimeter i don't fuck around it's man so cool man i love it um there are, um, yeah, go ahead, Brad. Uh, there, so there were two more notes I took down and I kind of wanted to hit on before we end this. We've been going for like an hour and a half, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to cut anybody off or, you know, let, or get in the way of anybody else sharing something they really want to. Um, does anybody else have anything they, they really want to throw out there? I can just wrap up with my two thoughts if we want. Hey, well, if, if we're talking about wrapping it up, I did want to give a plug for uh, nature. Um, there is a, I can put the link in the chat, but there's um, a couple of paths. I don't know if you can see that with my green screen. I guess you can't. There we go. Maybe a little bit better. But you can get these, um, you can get a lifetime access pass if you have any kind of uh, um, VA disabled uh, veterans can apply uh, on this website and get a, a lifetime access pass or active duty as well. Dependents, um, veterans, Gold Star families, uh, there's a, a nominal $10 a year fee. You can get a pass to national parks. Um, that's compared to like $80, $80, which is normal for getting a pass. So I can drop the link in there. But it gives you access to the Forest Service, National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, 
uh, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, and then Army Corps of Engineer, Bureau of Reclamation, and even some other places where you can, um, you know, use that benefit to uh, so, to enjoy some of the natural resources in America. I'll uh, leave you with that. <laughs>